Hello my loves, this is Heidi Raquel with your weekly oracle reading for I don't know what we're doing here anymore. Is it January 25 to February, or January 25 to the 31st, or is it the 27th to February 3rd? I don't know, because I used to do these on Monday, then I was told to do them on Wednesday. Now I don't know if I'm going to be doing them at all, or in what form, or how, or any of it. So, um... There's so much with all of that. So I'm just going to preface and say this is going to be a long one. Grab your popcorn, get comfortable because there's so much moving right now and it's moving in me too and everything is adjusting. There's a lot to go through and break down and um, this may be my last video for a little while. So I want to like really grab all the pieces. So the very first thing. Last week, I talked about this still point, this kind of bridge that we were we were moving across. And what it felt like is that there was a sped up energy on the one side and we were slowing down to come to this bridge. And what I thought was that there was also going to be a slowing, you know, this way and getting faster. And in some ways that's true. It almost came to a place of a screeching halt. Um, where everything just suddenly stopped, but it was more intense than that. So initially in that first day, I was like, oh my God, this is like, you know, I said in women's circle, it's like a lawnmower that you're like, keep trying to get to ignite, to get going again. And it's just died and it's not going to do it. It's going to do it in its own time. And so that's all that I thought that it was. And then as I was feeling into it more, I'm like, oh no, it's like we were on a flattened out timeline. We, we came to this midpoint, but what we were met with on the other side is not an open uh, timeline that was moving out smoothly this way. It's like the entire timeline here was smushed like a cartoon, you know, roadrunner kind of thing um, where, you know, they do the feet so fast that the whole road gets, um, gets squished up into one thing. And so the first couple days after that midpoint, Wednesday, Thursday-ish, um, last week, it felt like every, like the road was just smashed up in front of you and you couldn't see where, where you were going. It's, I had this feeling of like I needed to smooth everything back out so that I could even see where I was going. It was like all this information up at once. So there's an energy of that, like completely different shift of where what we were doing before and what we're doing now and really hard to discern like who am I what am I doing where am I going why am I doing it um, complete about face and some of those things so um, I've got some notes here because I really want to make sure to grab that so there's the smoothing it out piece there's the ego death I talked about that last week but even more so this week I'm feeling that sense of if I thought I knew who I was before this and I had that all hammered out, then without that piece of thinking that you know who you are, then who are you underneath that? Um, who are you really? So it's, it's a little bit like breaking away the who you were on the outside, projecting to the outside world and who are you really? And I have to bring in the full moon in Leo that's coming up uh, tomorrow. I don't, I think it's early morning Thursday Pacific time. Um, and I think this is hitting me especially personally because my moon is in Leo. And so I, I'm aware of that sense of like Leo being the, the actor, the performer. Um, Leo is also the heart. So it's like, you know, how are we showing up out in the world? How are we performing? And with it in the moon, it's like, how are we, how do we emotionally feel about that? And are we, are we happy with that, right? Like, how are we seen in the outside world? It's not even how are we seen, how are we showing up? And is that congruent with what's happening on the inside of us? And it's so important right now that those things be congruent. Um, so this sense of ego death, there's an energy of the cocoon, you know, the butterfly in the cocoon, because it's like we were one thing before and then we crossed the bridge and now we're something else. And I said, I, I did a little meme on Monday when I announced that I was going to start doing these on Wednesday and now I don't know what the hell is going to happen because I keep getting so much information and, and uh, different guidance. But um, 
so it's like I wrote I wrote a meme that said when everything feels like it's falling apart it's actually coming together and that is that sense of the cocoon it's like everything is falling apart in one sense because you're no longer a caterpillar but everything's coming together in the the squish um, and the pressure that's happening on the inside of that to bring you to something else so the other piece that really has been coming up for me in the last couple of days is like that sense of everything that feels like it's falling apart. When you feel like your guides have just abandoned you and everything is going terribly or the thing that you used to use suddenly isn't working, your bike is broken, like the spokes aren't, you know, the whole thing is not working. And the message that I keep getting is no, all of that, the universe is always conspiring in your favor. Everything that is falling apart is to bring you back together in a different way because we are being dismantled and we have to let go of all the parts that don't work anymore. All of the parts that were being operated from ego that weren't centered and grounded and connected in right relationship with the earth, those pieces have to go and we have to put ourselves together in a different way. And all the places that are vacant, those are going to be filled by spirit. What new thing is it going to you know, be that comes in? And it may be that it not be fully filled because we are learning that we are spirit and matter. We are human and spirit. We have to marry those two, right? Masculine, feminine, um, all of that. Um, okay, let's see. Routine, what makes us tick? This is another piece that's coming up. It's like we have to really start discerning and paying attention. What do I need for my daily life? Is it meditation? Is it exercising first thing in the morning? Is it, you know, what is it a writing practice? What is the thing that you need? And I'm, I'm recording this from my attic office um, studio creativity center at this point and all the places that it's, it's evolving on purpose with my new fireplace behind me because that is where we are. Um, I've been talking about the four and the five, you know, four being last year, the four legs on the table, the stability, and the five is now what we're creating on the table, creating a cross, right? Um, now that we're getting some of those structures in place and seeing that, we're having to attend to our fire, to our internal fire. Of course, Leo is, is a fire element as well. So you have that piece, like we're, we're cooking, so to speak, and... Um, the new us is cooking in that cocoon. And so I wanted the element and the energy of fire to be here behind me, guiding the way, right? Like these elements are always here showing us and, um, and guiding us along. So routine is really important and tuning into what do you need every day to keep yourself grounded, also open to spirit, also protected, um, so that you are not just taking in everything that's coming in off the street, right? That you're discerning about what's coming in. So this is another piece that's coming in and it's rebellion energy. And um, I don't know, maybe that's, that maybe that's connected to like the fiery Leo lion that's like, I'm going to be on the stage. I'm going to do it my way and don't tell me what to do. But um, I'm feeling that sense of like, I don't want to do it because I'm told to do it or even by myself. So, you know, I've always done these messages on Monday. I used to only do a monthly message. Then I was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe I want to do a weekly message now. And that felt really supportive. Um, so this is part of what I'll go into a little bit right now. Part of what's happening for me um, as I'm reshaping, redefining, looking into all these bits within myself. And what I'm noticing is there is absolutely a prostitute archetype that exists in Instagram. And I am starting to see that really clearly. And I'm starting to question what is it bringing and what is it taking from me? And getting really clear about that as I move through things in my business. Um, I don't think I've gotten a single client from Instagram. All of my clients come from real-time connections in real life. Yes, people have found me through here, but most of my business, my private practice, working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, even Women's Circle, all of that has all been through referral. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at that, like how much time am I spending on this platform and is it helping me or is it hindering me? And if it's helping me, how can I rework it so 
that um, I'm speaking to my audience and there's more of a direct back and forth content. And so I don't think it's that I will not be doing videos at all because what's what I'm being called to is actually share more. I'm, I'm being called to share more of my personal life, my personal practices, my you know chanting, meditation, teaching classes, all these things, but it doesn't feel like it's on this platform. And so I am in the internal work right now, cooking in my fire, in my attic, in my creative space going, okay, well, where is it then? What is it? Am I pulling everything onto my website? Are there other platforms? And so I just offer all of that of what I'm going through personally, because I feel like a lot of people that I tend to attract are entrepreneurs and, um, you know, they're women entrepreneurs, they're doing their thing differently. And I know for me, since I've started my practice three years ago, left my corporate job, the whole thing, everything that I have tried to follow from a marketing coach or anything that's like a boilerplate thing, it doesn't work for me. I, I can't do it. I have to create it in my own way. If it doesn't speak to me, it doesn't work. And I don't respond to the boilerplate stuff that other people put out either. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do the marketing like, hey, there, here's this class and these are the things that you're gonna get out of it. And that, I mean, that just feels like garbage to me. I'm like, there's an energetic quality of it, the way you talk about it, it grabs somebody or it doesn't. Most of the time when I'm looking at people's offerings, I'm not even looking at what it says. I'm reading the vibration and going, yes, I like this person, this is what it feels like, you know, all of that. So that's kind of my own rebellious energy that's coming up and, um really just looking into that. And so um, I'll, I'll get to what my plans are in a minute. So universe always conspiring in your favor and it's bringing it to support you. Also, the timing of things is so deeply connected to that piece around the universe always supporting you. So um, I, maybe I said this last week, but they're like, I'm seeing this in my own space where I've got my desk and everything is like, is is together. I've got my altar. I've got my place where I work with clients. Um, I've got my fire back behind me now. Um, and I'm still waiting on a table for uh, working on my collages. And I'm still working on waiting on a flat file. It's for all my artwork. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I just offer this as a different way to look at things. When something isn't showing up, it's not showing up for a reason because it isn't time for that thing yet. Um, and there's been a couple other things that have come up that I'm like, why am I not doing that channel writing for that person when I know that it was ordered two weeks ago? Like what's going on? And it's like the energy isn't present for it. And I have to honor that. Um, so there's a lot of that, like the reconciliation of energy. And speaking of that, this piece about routine um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We are being called to bring all four of those into congruence. So for me, I know I live in three of those, spiritual, mental, emotional, and I don't live in the physical as much. So um, I think that's why I've been drawn to the essential oils lately because those are, and the message that I've gotten from my guides around even offering that for clients is because so much of the work that I do is in that emotional, spiritual, mental plane. And then we all need something to take that and bring it down into the physical and translate it and help it um, integrate into the body. So I'm really heavily leaning on my oils right now to, to help me come into congruence with my physical body and bring all four of those planes um, and those bodies together. So let's see. Um, Okay, let's do a card now. Um, so we have for this month, and then I'll do uh, announcement, more announcements at the end. We have for this month already the Destroyer, right? I've been talking about that, and I'm like, oh my God, is that coming in hot? Like, I didn't expect it to be, you know, this strong. And again, if you haven't, you know, heard the previous messages, we had that in October, November, had a break in December, and then it came back in January. And I'm like, oh yeah, because it's here to clean house with all this excess leftover stuff, right? Then we had the vessel and Eros come up at one time, the container and the fire. Now I actually have the physical fire, which just, this got delivered like a week ago or something. And it's just in perfect time for this cocooning nesting announcement that I will share with you in a moment. And then we had Starborn last week. So um, that's the Trinity, the third card in the deck. It's the mother, father, and then the child. 
um, the starborn, the star seed that you are, like we're coming back to the awareness of our own spiritual magic and where we came from and all of that. And if there's one thing that the oils have been teaching me 100% is that we are so much bigger than we think we are. We have so much more available to us. And each one of these oils is igniting um, another color in the spectrum, the prism of who I am. It's like it's waking up all my faculties. And the vision that I keep getting is this piano um, out in front of us. And it's like the piano of who we really are stretches way further out than even a regular piano. But most of us are just playing those couple keys in the center. And so what's beautiful about incorporating essential oils and what is it's doing for me is it's waking up those other keys and it's reminding me of who I am and going, wow, like there's so much more vastness to all of us. And we have been taught out of that. And, um, you know, I even think that's part of this platform is like, it kind of dumbs us down to like, just focus on these, these certain things. And when we dive into this, we really have to be discerning about what we're looking at, you know, where, where we're looking, how we're using it and, and all of those things. So let me pull a card. We'll talk about that. And then I'll talk a little bit more about uh, what's coming up for me in the next month. Okay, here it is. Oh my God, seriously, you can't make this shit up. And we definitely have gotten this card before too, the gem. So this whole story that I've just talked about, the destroyer, the vessel, arrow, starborn, is all bringing us to the gem. And where is the gem found? The gem is found in the underworld. So we are also being asked to go into the underworld when the gem comes up. So let me read this. I know that we had this, like we definitely had this in the summer because we had this whole archetypal um, journey happening uh, where we did get the underworld card and then we got the gem card. Um, and that's what we were going in to get. So let me find this, sorry for the wait. Okay, here we go. The diamond, the gold, the inner treasure. There are infinite names for the gem. It is also known as the jewel, the star, the talent, the gift, the gold. One thing for certain is that it is found deep within a substance that is very much unlike it. For example, a diamond in the rough. The gem always stands in contrast to its surroundings. It can't, you can't find it when you are among comforts and pleasantries. Okay, this could not be more perfect for the announcement I'm going to make here at the end. Precious stones develop slowly deep in the earth amid pressure and darkness like the cocoon. Discovering the gem requires a descent beneath the surface, whereas there is no definitive map. Yet the longing to touch the true gem within us is so strong that we cannot help but seek out its radiance. Your gem, like your destiny, is unlike any prison in the prism. Um, wait, I'm sorry. Your gem is un your gem, like your destiny, is unlike any other in the entire world. Keep digging. Apparently the word prism just wanted to come out of my mouth and it wasn't even part of that sentence. Because that gem, those radiances, the the color that's coming out of us is is that uh, prism that I was talking about. Wind light, unique, shining, generative, irreplaceable, wind dark, envy, greed, grasping. Go deeper, legend of the crystal skulls and Leonard Cohen's diamonds in the mine. The moments of your life that glimmer are clues to where the gem resides. Don't covet the sparkling diamond of another. The gem is like a fingerprint never to be repeated again. Find yours. In mythology, the diamond is often linked to the daemon or inner light that leads us toward our true self, our purpose, our destiny. That's interesting. Um, that series, His Dark Materials, um, the kids before they reach about 13 all have a daemon that is an animal that goes with them. And I did not know that the translation of daemon was inner light. Um, that's so beautiful. Okay, so this could not be more perfect for... Um, the announcement that I have. And it, I'll, I'll say that I have trepidation about it. It's freaking me out a little bit, but I am being called to leave Instagram for at least a month, the entirety of February. I will not make any videos. Um, I will not be on here at all. In fact, I might delete the app completely off my phone so that I am not um, called to come back in or you know lured to come back in. 
So part of it is because of that, that uh, prostitute archetype. Part of it is because the whole of me is being readjusted and reformatted. And my guides are telling me that it's time to go into this cave. I thought that the cave had already happened, December and January. Even though it didn't feel as deep as I thought that I was going to go, I thought that it had was already happening and February was going to be the emerge. And what I'm hearing now is that it's likely March, maybe even later. Um, and that I'm being called to really dig deep, go into my cave, this hibernation space that I have created with my fire, and really dig deep into what is it that I want to be offering. And what I'm, what I'm feeling and what I'm hearing is that being on Instagram and um, offering my videos every week and being, you know, dialed into that is diluting a greater creation that I'm being called to create and give. And so it feels like I'm disappearing to go in the cave to create something bigger, to come out in, in even a bigger way. But I still think even that Instagram will be used, if I'm using it at all, is going to be used in a totally different way. Um, and there's just little drops here and there. And I do believe that videos will still be coming, but they'll either be only on my website, only on YouTube, um, you know, in and through classes, I'm not really sure how it's all going to go. So highly, if you follow me and you want to stay connected, get on my newsletter because that's where everything is going to be, uh, devilmagenta.com. And there's an easy, um, easy spot to, uh, sign up right there. You can contact me there always, you know, um, and I've been feeling the pull away from Facebook for a long time and hardly ever go on it at all anymore. But I'm feeling that with Instagram too. And then to be very intentional, I did a channel um, with my guides just before coming on here about this whole Instagram thing. And, you know, they were saying that, uh, well, they were saying many things, but um, there's an essence of it that you can lose yourself um, because it's kind of like stepping into the matrix. Um, it's like stepping into... Uh, like going out into the world, but you're doing it from your home. So in a way, you're bringing a lot of that toxic garbage into your home and into your space. Um, and I struggle with this because I've also gotten a lot of wonderful things. I found some amazing teachers on here. I mean, one of my dearest friends now I found through Instagram. So there is connection happening. And, and what my guide said in the channel is, you know, connection doesn't happen on Instagram. Connection happens outside of Instagram. You might find someone, but the true building of relationship and connecting with them happens off of this platform. And so um, I'm just feeling into all of that. And, you know, in the muck of it myself, that's why it's not well-defined. And I feel like there's a lot of, you know, this message is really chatty because there's a lot of it um, being unearthed and reworked in me. And there is a big ego death. Like I have to walk away from something I've been building for three years, but I'm not wake, walking away from my business. I'm still seeing clients. I'm still doing channel reading or writings. Um, and I'm still doing women's circle. All of that, you know, is, is still happening. Um, so I'm not walking away from that, but it's just this moment of taking a break and to give myself the space to really see like what's working for me, what's not. Where am I prostituting myself in a way that I that isn't supporting me? And where could I maybe shift things and do things differently? So I offer all of that because I know um, people that follow me often are entrepreneurs. They're going through kind of the same fabric. And so I just share that um, you know, as an offering, like if, if you feel called to do the same, like go with it, go with that internal, that internal nudge, because part of what we're being called to do, you know, this whole year is to come into better congruence with our intuition and to be operating from the inside out, not the outside in. And a lot of times, you know, even when I come on to post something, it's like, then you get, you get wrapped up into all that you're seeing. And so, Another message that I that I saw was uh, reduce the number of people that you're following so that you're um, and be really intent on when you come in, you come in, you do your thing, you get out. Um, 
So anyways, I love you all. That's a lot. It's a big message. Um, I hope you enjoyed the popcorn um, and the, the relaxation. And I will miss all of you. I will, I will miss coming on and doing these messages. But, um, and I'm not, I'm not going to hold myself if I feel like it's right to come, to come back in, then maybe I will. But um, I think it will probably be over to YouTube or it will be just to my website. So um, get that connection. And I know I'm not the only one going through this. Um, I know there's been some, some rustlings around of people kind of dropping off and reassessing. So, um, but it's hard to hold the balance of opposites that there are positive things that I've gotten from it. And then I'm going, but does that outweigh the negative pieces, um, and all of that? And, you know, having friends on social media has nothing to do with having friends in life. Um, if you're unfollowing or unfriending people on social media, it has nothing to do with the physical life. And don't we want to be spending more time having intimate relationships with people in the physical? And, um, you know, the pandemic in general, even though, um, you know, we've, we've been pushed to use these platforms more because we've been disconnected and there's been a lifeline there, you know, more Zoom calls and I brought my women's circle online which is great because now people all over the world can join, which is wonderful. Um, so there's, there is benefits. That's, I can't say that, you know, technology is all for shit and it, it's, it's terrible. Like that, that's not true at all. And yet, um, you know, where's the line and when do we, where and when do we draw it, you know? So adios for February. I'll see you in March. And, um, I don't think I'll be doing a February message. Um, just consider this the message. Um, you know, the only piece that I'd gotten when I thought that I was going to do a February message, so I'll leave it here so, so that you have it, is like we're learning to drive again. We're learning to, you know, it's like we're spinning donuts. We've been, we've been driving the car with the wheel pulled all the way to one direction. And when we're doing that, that's like, you know, only living on the left brain. We're just spinning in donuts. We're just doing this when it's not balanced and we need to course correct. And that's part of what I'm talking about and where we're going anyways. Okay, I've almost hit 30 minutes. So I think we'll shut this down for now. Um, love you. If you want to be in touch, um, you know, email me, connect with me on my website, uh, newsletter, all of those good things. And I'll be announcing anything and everything that I'm doing uh, going forward there. But I know that the offerings are going to be more. This isn't about disappearing. This is actually about ramping up. Um, so clearly I'm having a hard time saying goodbye because uh, this message is long. But uh, love you, love you dearly, namaste, and um, be well in the, in the heart month of February and take care of yourself in this full moon tomorrow in Leo and, um, you know, touch in with your heart and where it is that you feel like you're guided to go and go there inside out, not outside in. All right, blessings.